Um, this is our last class on the heart of the eternal plan or the heart of the father for his son or the heart of his son towards the father or the heart of God to be discovered, you know, whether it be father, son, or Holy Spirit. Um, I know most people, for example, the Holy Spirit, and we're not going to talk about this much, but, you know, most people think they've discovered the heart of the Holy Spirit, and that's to come and give us gifts and, and make our church services more exciting than boring and, uh, you know, stuff like that. But <clears throat> you talk about a giver. The Holy Spirit is a giver. He is a giver, and he hardly ever you know, gets acknowledgement on a person basis, three, the third person of the Trinity. On, the, on a person basis, uh, it's more mystical to us. But if we could uh, not try to formulate what he would look like, although I've drawn a picture of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one of the only pictures I've ever seen anyone attempt, um, uh, and I won't go into the way I pictured him, but it was based on personal experience. Um, but if we would try not to formulate a picture of him, but we would know him um, by his works, you know, and Jesus says stuff like that, and we go, oh, yeah, if you don't believe me, then believe me for the works. So we go, oh, yeah, he healed, he healed us, or he did this or that. But he's not talking about the actual works themselves, but what it is that he does and why and in what spirit. Anyway, the Holy Spirit is another one who is hidden. And um, you're not going to really know him by simply um, religious activity. <clears throat> For example, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't go on this, but for example, the, the picture that we get in Genesis where the uh, Father Abraham sent the, the servant, the Holy Spirit, out of the country, out of uh, where God is, as it were, into Haran to, get, to bring back a, a bride for the son. Um, the, he came down there with gifts, right? Do you all remember that? He came with gifts, and he gave her, and he gave the family gifts. And so can you imagine this big, this big jamboree going on where he's giving everybody gifts, and they're all going, woo and yeah, oh, praise God, you know? And, and, of course, they're not necessarily understanding these are from the Father, you know? <clears throat> it's like the Holy Spirit. It's the gifts of the Spirit instead of the gifts that the Spirit brings, you know. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, and so no one really knows him, and, and I don't even think they catch the words while he's there. They're going, oh, you know, he says, I got to get back. I got to get her to the Son. I got to fulfill the Father's purpose for which he sent me. And they don't get it. And they go, oh, no, stay longer, stay longer, you know. Maybe we'll get some more gifts and whatever, you know. And he goes, he's just begging, basically. He's pleading, please don't hold me here in this kind of a setting. I want to take her to the son as a bride. And, I, and it's, not just, it's not just fulfilled by getting her there. Like if I could, in other words... Uh, the, he would say, Eliezer, uh, if someone said, look, I'll give you a, a plane ticket and you can be there in an hour with her. He'd go, no, no. This needs to take time. We're going to go on camels, not horses. You know, not horses. We're going to go on camels. We're not, she's not going to ride in a nice chariot or something, you know. Uh, and it, that cu that's covered from the elements or this or that, you know. Um, she's going to ride on a camel and we're going to go through this together. And what are we going to go through together? She's going to ask me, well, who is it I'm going to? 
Who is it? What's he like? What's he like on the inside? You know, I'm sure she would think, well, does he like coffee or, you know, something like that. Uh, he said, yeah, but that's not really the deal because a lot of people like coffee. <laughs> So you're not really knowing him by that. So let's talk about really what's there, what's, what's in his heart, and what he's really, really like. And you're only going to get that from me because I'm around him all the time. I, I lay out his things. I see his response if I, I didn't iron it just right. Or, you, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Um, so uh, my, my point is not just the Holy Spirit, but my point is that the Father and the Son, <clears throat> and, and might I even say any of the hidden ones. Um, I think Jesse Penn Lewis has a book called the, His Hidden Ones, Thy Hidden Ones. And it's based on a scripture that uses that. And, you know, uh, so much of Christianity, unlike the Father, unlike the Son who came as a servant, Unlike the Holy Spirit, in Christianity, the goal is to become something, to become known, you know. And, uh, you know, someone once asked me, well, you know, how, you know, when you die, how would you, you know, how would you like to be known? And I said, I wouldn't. And they went, what? I said, I don't want to be remembered. How would you like to be remembered? That's what they said. And I said, I wouldn't. I don't want to be remembered. And then later on, the Holy Spirit, you know, he's, he, he kind of chides you a little bit. Not bad, but he just goes, um, you want to be remembered the way people remember you, not the way you want to be remembered. And for some, that's going to be remembered as, well, he was a horrible person and a horrible pastor. <laughs> for others, he, he affected me with Jesus. Infected me with Jesus. Affected. <laughs> affected me. You know, but whatever. You know, as far as my, my end of it, I don't want to be known. I want Jesus known. And if he got known in my lifetime, that's great. And if... And if he didn't, I've totally failed everything that I've existed for since I was in my early 20s. That's my one goal. Well, that's nothing compared to the Holy Spirit. Look at him. You never see him. He, the only time he gets mentioned is when he's, he's given us a gift. Like if we're still back in Haran and he's passing out gifts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And... Uh, and the Father in, the, in a very similar way. I mean, we think we know the Father better. And we, you know, we think we know the Father, but, you know, as we've been talking, you don't know the Father until you've known him by the Son, through the Son. And, and when I hear the Son talk of the Father, it, it opens avenues of the heart that would not have been opened in me because it opened avenues of his heart towards someone that's not me. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, John 5, chapter 5, and verse 16, if you want to look at that with me. Uh, verse 16, starting with verse 16, Therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath, okay, on the Sabbath day. <clears throat> so they are, they are like us. They are like, their responses are like us. They, they are religious. They have heard, Moses heard from God, uh, honor the Sabbath, right? Okay. Now, they don't know what the Sabbath is, and Jesus does. The Sabbath is not, I'm not going to do any work today. It's going to be the Father, but every day was the Sabbath 
for the son, for the son. Um, so Jesus answers, verse 17, but Jesus answered, so here's his answer, my father worketh hitherto and I work. Um, and I, I kind of, I kind of got another thought of this. It was like a, like a, a young 14-year-old son who he sees his father over there doing something. And he gets over there, you know, say he's working on the barn or something. He gets over there and his, his you know, his, you know, the father's working on something. His little face is right up in the middle of, you know, it's like I'm in between the father and his hands to see what's flowing here. Do you kind of understand? And uh, my father worketh hitherto and I work. And so he goes over here and he goes, can I help you with this? Can I work what you work? Can I be about what you're about? Well, the father can say, no, go play. Go visit your friends. Go ride your bicycle or whatever. You know, can say anything. Um, but this son is, is occupied with the father. And that's what you, we see this over and over and over. Um, it's it's kind of like, if my father's working on it, that's what I'm going to be going to do. Okay. But see, we, we say, well, God told me to do this. You know what I mean? I mean, that's different. It is. It's different. It's di God told me to do this. It's not the same thing as my father is working on this, and I see my father's heart, so I'm working on it. The other one is I have a call. See, that, that's where we go with this. We all do it. We all do it. I have a call. So I'm just following the call of God. Do, anybody see the difference? One is just it's some sort of a spirit. This is a spiritual thing that God does. And he, you know, and there's always us in the response. It is, you know, God called me. I'm called. I'm called. Don't you wish you were called? Uh, I'm called, and I'm called to, I'm called, it, it's, you know, it's always called to great things. I mean, it is. It is. You know, I'm called to be a member of this church and just clean everyone's toilets in all the church. You know, you never hear that one, you know, or something like that. It never goes in that, you know, it's like, oh, you know, no, oh, I've been, you know, it's the same thing with, you know, for people who believe in reincarnation. They always come back. I was a, I was a great prince, or the girls. I was a princess, and I'm, I was going to be married to, you know, all this kind of stuff. And you know, nobody says, you know, I was a, I was a cockroach and got stepped on. <laughs> you know, I mean, they don't. Nobody says that. Nobody goes there. It's like, you know, for sure, I was a cockroach. Okay. <laughs> you know? And that's that's all that stuff that works in us, you know, and um, you know. So it's like, okay, you. So back in your former life you were a prince on a planet where everybody was a prince a queen a king or a princess because everybody is that so it's, at what point in history was that you know were there no cockroaches or whatever <laughs> so anyway i'm sorry a bunch of that's my weird mind but it's just uh, um but I'm just trying to show this thing. Jesus is not called to the Father's heart. I'm tr that's what I'm trying to get across. He's not called to the Father's heart. It's not a calling. It's a desire that is in him that he wants the Father to get what's in his heart. And he's not thinking about what desire he has in his own heart. And what pleases him, you know, Delight yourself in the Father, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You mean you're going to give me the desire to only give you what's in your heart? Yes. Yay! And Jesus would go, yay! I win! And we go, what? Then you're just a servant. You're just a lowly servant. Oh, you, you know... Well, he was, but he's not. See, thou, over in Galatians 4, you were servants, but now are you sons. 
by this Abba Father thing, see? And, you know, and because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son, you know, saying, great ministry is to be mine, or whatever. I mean, there's so many things that we would say that the revelation of, of Christ is, and it's never for the Father. It's, oh, well, God's got everything for God's sake, you know? It's, it needs to be about me, or it needs to be, it needs to be about others, but, you know, if we don't have it toward the Father and the Son, then where are we going to have it? I mean, it has to start there and flow down. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father. You know, I write these things that we might have fellowship, but I'm telling you, our true fellowship is with the Father and the Son, and that's where our fellowship flows from. That's what John is saying. Um, so, uh, so Jesus says, you know, my father, you know, if, if my father's working on it, so am I. And uh, therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him. <laughs> it's like, so what are you saying? You're, you know, you know, Jesus says, my desire is that the father get his desire. So they say, what are you saying? You're equal with God? Is that what you just said, that you're equal with God? And he's going... Not at all. I said, I want to serve his heart. If I was equal, then I would say, I want everybody to serve our hearts. Mm -hmm. But that's what they got out of it. You're saying you're equal with God. And, and Jesus could say he, he wouldn't do this. He could say, I never mentioned God. They go, you just said, I, said, I was just talking about my father. See, but we're, it's got to be a God thing. This is a God thing. And I know the Father is God, but I'm trying to make a, a discrimination between I am serving God because everybody's serving God. You understand that? But not everybody's serving the Father. Not everyone. And those who are serving God may not be doing it in the same spirit that a son or the son would serve the Father. And that is... I want you to get the desires of your heart, and I work towards that end, whereas someone else is serving God mainly because of his calling and because, you know, the world, the world, the world needs. But when it all began, the father said, well, I'd like, you know, I'd like sons, and Jesus said, I'd like a bride after my kind. And they didn't say, well, we created the world so that the devil could immediately trip everything up and then we could spend the rest of our time working on the ills of a sick world. So let's do that. Let's create a world. Let the devil loose. And then all we ever do is just try to fix up people who never will get it. <laughs> and the bro... <laughs> A broken world that is constantly, you know, well, I, I need this, or I hurt, and this, fix this, or oh, God, my job, or oh, this, and they're up there going, oh, this is so fun. This is exactly <laughs> what I wanted, a Satan-infested world with people. <laughs> you know? But I mean, you know, and so that's our ministry, amen? Our ministry we wouldn't have had a ministry if say, Adam and Eve hadn't sinned. Well, I mean, if we go on that basis, there would be no ministry. Well, no mi well ministry is about what's wrong. <laughs> well, the, well, the ministry of the Son to the Father, is, there's nothing wrong with the heart of the Father. This isn't something wrong. This is something right. This is something worthy of giving your time and heart and spirit and body and, you know, resources that the father may get the son yes. and but but here's the you know and here's the key here's the thing though is that that will never happen because we raise up a bible school and we teach it that only happens when somebody in a Bible school is sitting there and they're listening 
and something strikes them so deep and something rings so true that they, they are willing to, you know, here's Jesus, forsake all, deny yourself, come follow me. Well, where is he going to lead? Well, he's going to lead to the cross. Where is he going to lead after that? He's going to lead to the Father. I go to the Father. I'm going to die and I'm going to go to the Father. And so there's that spirit, you know, there's that spirit. Anyway, so the Jews sought the more to kill him. The more. Because they misread, because we constantly misread. Um, but said also that God was his father. They're saying, he said the father works and I work. And so... He's making himself equal with God, and he's saying that God was his father. He's saying that God is the progenitor of what he does. Yeah, he's father. That's what a father does. He's the progenitor of what I do. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself. This is not because he is impotent or unable or handicapped this is because the son will not function outside the father won't do it this is he's my life he's he's everything if you've seen me you've seen the father oh jesus you've done so many you know i've had people say to me well you know the miracles jesus did proves he's the son of god I said, the thing that proves he's a son of God is that he, he, he's pointed towards the Father. That to him, as a son, it's about the Father. And then I say, besides, Jesus didn't do that. Well, the miracles Jesus did proves that he's a son of God. No, Jesus said the Father did them. So... The Son, not, not Jesus of Nazareth, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do. And I wrote a little parenthesis speaking for Jesus. I don't pick and choose what I will be involved with. Well, that sounds like bondage to say it like that. I mean, this is America. <laughs> Land of the free. Home of the Braves, the Rangers, the, what's the name of Seattle? Mariners, yeah. The Braves, the, the Mariners. The. Um, the son can do nothing. I don't pick and choose what I see from the father. For what things soever he doeth, these also the son doeth. And I wrote, um, whatever the father's involved with, that's what the son will be about. And, and I'm doing this differently in a certain sense. I'm, I'm trying to bring out, I'm literally trying to bring out Jesus' heart towards the father. And I don't think I'm doing a real good job on this particular session but um, the next verse says for the father loveth the son and showeth him all things that himself doeth he shows the father loves the son and shows him where his interests lie that's a big deal that's the father opening up that's the that's the him opening up because the son not a Christian I'm a Christian. What do you What do you need, God? Well, I'm a I'm a son by the son. What father? Where do your interest lies? For the father loves the son and shows him all things, whatever soever that he doeth. He shows him where his interest lies, so that the son can enter into it with him, and he will show him greater works. And here's that verse. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Okay. 
So what are the greater works that he's going to show the son? Well, the greater work is going to be the cross. That's going to be the work that does, that brings the father the sons that he wants. Right? All right, so John 5, 30 and 32. I can of mine own self do nothing. See, that's, he's, that's what he said earlier. I can have my, this is uh, John 5, verse 30 and 32. I can have my own self do nothing, nothing. As I hear, I judge. Okay, so here's what I wrote. I can have my own self do nothing. My judgments are not my own. They're not my own. I'm not, this is, see, don't you think that a son, okay, we can use the prodigal again, but don't you think that a son's judgments would be different from his father's? That's a common thing, whether it's a son or daughter, your judgments are different. You know, I'm not going to raise my kids like that. <laughs> that's, that's a common one, you know. And um, um, because, um, because in this world, it's different than the way it is with the Father and the Son. And that's hard for us to comprehend because we have our own mind. We have our own understanding. And it sounds hard because we don't have the Son functioning in us when we hear it. Yeah. I'm telling you the truth. We don't. So, so any, if Jesus says, take up the cross and deny yourself, and you don't have the Son, you know, and his heart working in you, all you're going to see is, are you kidding me? I wanted to be famous. I was hoping to get on, you know, Belgian Idol. <laughs> American Idol, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get on there and be famous. <laughs> they don't have Swahili Idol or something like yes. that. <clears throat> That's a language, actually. <laughs> Uh, only in America and, and England. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so, <laughs> so, so Jesus says, I, uh, as I hear, I judge. And my ju okay, uh, so I can do nothing of my own as I hear, I judge. My judgments are not my own. I can't make judgments based on me and where I'm at or what I want. My judgments are not my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I don't seek my own will. I have no mixture. I have no self-mixture in this. Okay, so forget you. Forget applying this to you. Try to follow how intimately Jesus is committed to the Father. That's real. This, these scriptures are real. This is real. This is a real thing. Okay. Except for, here's the thing. He does keep saying, Father, Son, Son. My, the Son can do the Son. Okay. But if we're going to be sons of God by Christ, then some of these eventually have to take over. I know it's not instantaneous. And it, and it may not happen for many Christians. But for those that hear more than just these scriptures and the, just the wording, but began to grasp this intimate dedication of the son's heart to bring about the father's heart, it affects you. It deeply affects you. And, and again, maybe right now in this place and at this moment, it's not affecting you, okay? I, I, you know, my goal isn't to affect you. My goal is to communicate what the Spirit has given me, and these things are what the Son's heart is pointed to, always and forever. Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father, which hath sent me his interests are all I am concerned with. That's it. His interests are all I'm concerned with. That's not in the scripture. That's my little thing. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Because for me, it's not about what I want. It's not about me. So it's not about what I want. There's another that beareth witness <clears throat> or takes care of me. If I bear witness of myself, 
It's wrong in the Godhead. It's wrong in the spirit and nature, the way God functions. But there is another that bears witness of me. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and he's talking about the Father. And I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. However he sees me is the correct view. His witness of me is true because, why? Because I know it's the truth, bless God. It is pure, right doctrine and truth. No. He's saying, I know that whatever he witnesses of me is true. It doesn't matter. It is based on however he sees me. That's what's the correct view. I don't even have to mold the Father into viewing me correctly, which is my view of the way I want him to. See, we're always, it's a, it's a form of manipulation. Do you realize that? To do that is a form of manipulation. And, it, and it's also a form of, I'm sorry, rebellion in that it does, it will not accept um, uh, the son's view and the father's view of the son it wants to mold a new relationship with the Father based on not the Son, but a Son's view of what he wants. I, I, I cannot do my own will. It's not about me. If I bear witness to myself, my witness is not true. Uh, but there's another that bears witness of me, and I know that the witness he beareth of me is true. Again, however he sees me is the correct view. Okay. What if, what if it, your life, it seemed like God was just turned against you? Okay. Um, and let's just say that here's, here's your conclusion. God has turned against me because um, people are persecuting me and people are robbing from me and I'm losing and I'm, uh, uh, I'm not gaining and I'm... Uh, not happy because uh, you know everybody's against me and da 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 and you go into that and so you appear as a, an evil person to everyone I don't mean just not a good Christian I mean like you know you're you have demons and you're you know you're of Satan and you 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 manipulate people and you do all this and da 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 Okay, so, so we would say, well, since this is always about me, this has to change. Right? I mean, if, this, if it's about me, then this, God, yes. this has to change. Yes. This has to change. This can't be. Because, you know, don't they know? See, that means it's about me. Don't they know that I'm da 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 da? All, oh, no, this whole, see, it, we can be real Christian in church for services and all this week in and week out, month, year in, year out. But when stuff, the stuff like this arises, all oh, this flurry, <gasps> this isn't right. And, you know, and God, you have to do something. You have to vindicate me and you have to, you have to punish the people that would have, that made me look this way or spread rumors that I was this way or all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> but what if God wanted his son out of you during that time? The crucified son. What if, what if that's what he wanted? Can you be satisfied with that? Can you say, I'm, I am pleased to appear and look any way you want me to look to people? <clears throat> Let's take Jesus as an example. <laughs> okay. You know, he's the son of God for God's sake. You know, and he is healing and he is blessing and he is feeding and he's doing all these great things. So he looks good to certain people, but to certain other people, he doesn't look good. But boy, when the plan starts, then the words flying and then the, the higher ups and the people that would know right, you know, what's really true and what's not start saying this guy's got a demon and he's got this and that and everything else. And pretty soon he works its point to crucifying the son of God. Father, not my will, but thine be done. That's a son. That's right. The devil says to Jesus, if you're son of God, you know, turn these stones into bread. Feed yourself. He'd been fasting, 
for 40 days. F feed yourself. You're hungry. What is God putting you through? This is not right. You're hungry and naked and da-da-da-da. Remember in Romans 8, I'm, I'm thinking of Romans 8. You know, what shall separate me from the love of God? So nakedness or peril or this or that or da-da-da-da? No, I'm persuaded that, okay. So we're talking about a son. If you're a son of God, turn, feed yourself. So Jesus doesn't do a miracle for himself, but when he sees the others, he feeds them. He does a miracle. Okay. So cast yourself down and prove it. Okay, so then it gets, gets to the cross where everybody, the only malefactors are hung on that cross and he's hung between two of them also. And all the Pharisees are mocking him and everything. And they say, if you're, if you're the son of God, come down from the cross. Well, I'll do that then because I want to appear as a son of God. Well, how does a son of God appear? What do they look like? <laughs> I mean, what do they look like? Can, can they look like Jesus when he's healing, opening someone's eyes, and everybody goes, oh, oh, you know, surely this is the Messiah, the Christ, or whatever. Um, or he's ripped naked, beaten, mocked, and has and his hands are tied up, and his feet are, I mean, you know, he's put in a position where he can't do anything about it. And he says, Father, forgive him. Okay. Can you be the vessel he wants you to be? How about this? Can you be the vessel that he wants you to be the one that the people need, not what you think you should be. It's the, it's, it's the end of the Batman Dark Knight movie. <laughs> I mean, it's great. I mean, check it out, check it out. It's powerful. It is powerful. Can you be what God needs you to be for the people at whatever cost to yourself? If he needs you to be a criminal, then be a criminal. If he needs you to be uh, uh, great, if he needs you to be Solomon, be Solomon. If he needs, but be what he needs you to be, not what you aspire to, or not what uh, you, you know. Because we can, we can, we can take those motives and we can say, okay, I'm going to be with you, Lord. And then we hide them in all these little compartments. We've got these little secret compartments where we hide our motives and stuff in, you know. So, you know, if I don't see him, then they're not there. I am really a son of God. I'm mean, Christ is really in me. Get back in there. You know, he pops his little head out. <laughs> little, that little wrong motive, you know. <laughs> he pops out. Hey, how about this? Hey, shh, not right now. They're, listening. they're watching me. You know, we'll talk later when it's just you and me. You know, and, and well, we'll conspire later. It's just you and me. Well, you know, one of the things Jesus has to do, folks, I'm sorry, this is just a fact. One of the things he has to do is the hog pen. And one of the things he has to do is call Rotor Rooter and clean out all of those little hiding places. You know, he, he has to remove all of those little motives and those little furry creatures that you've got in those different compartments and stuff and get those things flushed out of there. And, chased out of there and stuff like that. Well, we go, you know, I mean, one part of us says, yes, yes, Lord. Get rid of anything that's not you, e except that one, okay? <laughs> except that one right there. Don't touch that, and I'll be fine, and I'll be for you, okay? And he goes, as long as that's there, you'll be for you. Okay. so. And he can't do that all at once. You know, he can't just do the whole thing. He did it at the cross, but he has to apply. We have to be with him in the application of the cross in those areas. We have to agree with the cross. We have to agree with the, the, the death of Christ. And we have to um, uh, reckon in relationship to ourselves. And so much more than that. That's, not, that's just the beginning parts of it. 
But there, there comes that time where all of the desire of our heart, we've, let's just say that we've really come to see the heart of the Son, and we've, from that, we've come to see the heart of the Father, and something in us is deeply moved, and it's real. Well, as long as we got these other things in there, they're going to mess with it. You know what I mean? It's, that's where mixture comes from. So we got something pure right here. You think it's going to stay pure? No, there's going to be, as long as those things are in there, they're going to go, well, and then, then we'll go, well, I see, I see gold. And then you say, well, look a little closer, and you go, I don't, I don't see fly legs, you know, or spider legs in there, you know, mixed in with it. Well, it's there. And so, um, so there has to be not just a desire for the Lord. There has to say, you know what? I got all of this stuff. I got all of these things working in me. And, and I love you, but I have to stop loving myself. And to do that, there has to be some steps taken. Well, you're not... You're not doing anything apart from the cross. You're not doing anything apart from what Jesus has already accomplished. You're working in conjunction with the crucified Christ. That's what you're doing. All right. So, well, let me. This is John 8, 26. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. I have many things I think are important, but the only thing that is important is how he sees things. I have many things to say and to judge, but he that sent me, he's the one that's true. I got, sure, I got my views and da-da-da-da. I have my judgment. I have many things to say that are important, but the only thing that's important is how he sees things, okay? All right, so we read that. We, say, we see Jesus. I have many things to say unto you um, and to judge of you. And we go, and he'll, you know, after he's resurrected, he's going to have a good talk with us because mm -hmm. he's got many things. But then he says, but. He doesn't say, and also. He says, but he that sent me is the one that's true. He that sent me is true. So it doesn't matter. See, here, this is so hard. This is so hard for us. I'm, you know, we think because we see something wrong um, that number one, it's wrong. Number two, it needs to be dealt with. Number three, if it affects me, it really needs to be dealt with in them, um, which is nothing but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is. It's nothing but that. It's not the tree of life. I guarantee it's not the tree of life. All right, but we, we think that. So, so we, have, we have many things to say and to judge of others. <laughs> you know, we all do. We all do. <laughs> but he that sent me is true, you know. The only thing that's important is how he sees things. All right, so this, is, this was one of the things that, that the Lord dealt with me many years ago, and it had an effect on me. I was dealing with what I saw in others as, and this was even long before this church ever arose, <clears throat> seeing things in others that I thought were really off from what the Lord was and what the Lord wanted. And, um, and I saw that in terms of specific things that they did or didn't do. Okay. And um, so, you know, I, was, I had many things to judge and to say. <laughs> And uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit's been really good to me. I mean, he really has. And he's, you know, Jesus said he will guide you and teach you. And, you know, f for whatever reason, it's like he pulls me aside and he just kind of puts his arm around me. 
and he just teaches me, and it's real gentle and it's real. But he said, Randy, to to know, to to know what's wrong with everybody, and what's right with everybody, would be to know all things, to be all knowing, to be omniscient. And you're not omniscient. You don't know everything. And of course, I looked at him and said, I don't. <laughs> Will we? <laughs> and, uh, um, and it began a new work in me where I could, um, where I could uh, trust. I could trust. I could trust that my father knows what's going on and that even though I have many things to say and to judge, I keep my mouth shut because he's the only one that's true. Uh, but when, but Jesus says, but when he, you know, when he speaks, then I speak what he speaks. Does that make sense? Then, then it's not your judgment. And if he doesn't speak, that doesn't mean, you know, that, that, you know it doesn't mean something's not wrong. It just means... If he doesn't want to, if he doesn't want it addressed, he doesn't want it addressed, and that's a that's a tough deal for a for a pastor. I mean, my understanding of what a pastor was when I first got into the ministry was that you're supposed to know everything. First of all, you're supposed to fix everything. Uh, everybody is supposed to follow you and respect you. All you know, all of those things. Well, I found out that ain't it. <laughs> At least not with this group. Uh, that that more times than not, whatever I even feel from the Lord, I can't just push people. I'm not a cattle driver by, behind the, the cattle driving them. I'm supposed to walk before, and I'm supposed to be with the Lord. See, I think that's an advantage of being a shepherd. If you're behind them, you're going, hey, that stop that. And, you know, you see everything. <laughs> But if you're, if you're in front, you're like, I know they're a mess, just y'all pray for us. <laughs> and there, are, you know, and people, people say, well, Randy, you're the pastor, you should do something. So I go to the Lord, I go to Jesus, and I say, you're the good shepherd, you should do something. I don't really think that, but I just say it to him because he knows you've said it to me. And he, he, I go, so what, you know, what, what are you going to do about it? And he's, he goes, nothing. But he doesn't mean nothing. Yes. He doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. You see, for example, you know, uh, someone with a problem says, we need, to, we need to do something. I said, well, we need to wait on the Lord. And I said, but we, we can't just be passive. I said, waiting on the Lord is not passive. Yeah. It's an active thing. I could hear them saying, maybe for you. <laughs> but for me, it's like, I'm not doing anything. We gotta do something, we gotta fix this, we gotta da 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 da. And I'm just like, you know, uh, I mean, I get judged just as much for not doing stuff as doing something that someone would think is wrong. Well, you know, we go back to the Batman thing. Well, if that's, if that's what the Lord wants me to be at the time, and this is the same for you. If, if that's what the Lord wants you to be at the time, if you don't have all the answers, if you're a husband and you don't have all the answers, or, you, or, or God just says, I'm not going to tell you what to do, trust me, but I'll look bad to my wife. You know, I mean, she wants me to be the head and to have it all together. And can you say... I'm just with you, Father. I'm with you, whatever. But the religion teaches us there should never be any divisions or problems. If pe two people have problems, you should work to, what is it, restore. You should work to restore that relationship. Well, guess what? I know that I know it's in the Bible, but it's not just in every situation. There are too many in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Look at Paul and Barnabas and Paul and Silas and all of that stuff. You know, we go, well, this is not of God. 
Well, it really was of God. It ended up being of God, and it ended up being used the way the Father wanted to. And we said, well, that's not the way I would have done it. Well, you're not God. I'm not, and say, I'm talking to myself. You're not God. That's not how I would do it. Um, and so you learn after a while to quit saying to God, to the Father, well, that's not the way I would do it. I'm standing out here, and you did this with your prodigal son in there, and that's not the way I would do it. And we're just violating the Father again. See, we're not sons. We're not sons of God by Christ, but we're religious, and we are called, and we've got all this stuff that we're going to do, and it's all going to bring glory to God, but not to the Father and not to the Son. Just some ethereal God. You know, the Almighty says, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters. And you hear that, and it just will rip your heart out if you really understand. He's trying to speak beyond what we know and feel and see. He's trying to bring us into something dear to his heart, and it'll become dear to your heart. But if we don't, if we don't hear him, if we don't at least say, speak from thy servant here, you know. Eli told Samuel that. Look, just go back and say, speak for thy servant here. I'm not in charge. I don't know everything. Speak and I'll hear it. Father, we just ask you to bless this class, and not in itself, but with the Holy Spirit who has the ability to take things so far beyond anything I could say or anything I know. And I humbly ask you to, to feed the sheep here and on Skype and those who will listen to these things later, I humbly ask you that what is in your heart, that you communicate that. And Father, you, I just tell you, I'm sorry if I've said anything out of whack with what's in your heart, but I will tell you that I have a passion for your heart and my only desire is that we here would walk together in the things that you care about, not in the things that we're ambitious to, to reach. So Father, thank you that you are faithful. You know every one of us and where we're at. May your faithfulness bring us into the eternal and separate us from the things that we're religiously doing for you that are not eternal and that only what flows from the lamb on the throne is truly going to go heal anybody, heal the nations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for times at your feet. In Jesus' name, amen.